Hello everyone. So, we are discussing the thermal transmission related comfort of clothing. Now, in last segment we have discussed the thermal resistance under compression. So, this instrument which is actually it is modification of the guarded hot plate where at different compression level we have seen that the thermal transmission or thermal resistance changes. So, as, as the compression level increases the thermal resistance of uh, fabric uh, reduces. So, here the values resistance values are compared with the different other instruments like guarded hot plate and alum beta and what we have seen the present instrument gives the lower insulation that means, for same fabric which is mainly due to the higher initial pressure. And also we have seen that for same fabric if we increase the normal pressure. So, the insulation characteristics will be low. So, fiber will lose its insulation due to compression that means, when the fabric is compressed it actually releases the entrapped air the entrapped air is uh, lost. So, it actually loss its insulation characteristics. So, from this study we know that if we can now incorporate on the other hand if we can incorporate the air pocket inside the structure somehow. So, we can incorporate the insulation we can enhance the insulation of the uh, fabric. So, with that idea the next study next uh, approach was that that how to increase the bulk. So, the increasing by increasing the bulk we can bulk in the yarn we can make the fabric insulating. Bulk yarns are produced by technique or technique that we will discuss. So, when we produce the bulk yarn we convert the normal yarn to bulk yarn. So, we are introducing air pockets in yarn structure. So, steel airs are entrapped and which affect the thermal transmission characteristics. So, if we entrap the air say if we entrap the air in a cotton yarn somehow in that the thermal conductivity will be reduced as compared to 100 percent cotton yarn. So, the entrapped air in the loose fibrous assembly that space that do not allow the heat to transmit freely okay, from the one layer to another layer. So, another approach was there to incorporate a bulk or incorporate in entrapped air that is by micro pores. We can incorporate micro pores. So, this is done by actually blending the cotton fiber with PVA. So, PVA fiber which is soluble in water in warm water it gets dissolved. So, if we blend with a certain proportion the PVA fiber with the cotton fiber and produce a normal yarn and after washing after the fabric is made. So, if we can wash that uh, fabric that means, PVA fiber within the yarn structure will come out. So, leaving a micro pores within the yarn although there are micro pores in staple yarn, but it will enhance the micro pores. This micro pores will actually enhance the thermal insulation characteristics. So, it increases the uh, porosity of the yarn increases the thermal 
insulation of the fabric. So, first we will discuss the mechanism of bulk development that is a very common development which is the bulk uh, common principle that is we use for acrylic bulk yarn. So, in acrylic bulk yarn production what we do we use two different types of fiber one is a normal fiber and another is a shrinkable fiber. In, in present study what we have used we have used a normal fiber which is cotton and uh, the shrinkable fiber which we have used the shrinkable acrylic fiber. So, cotton and acrylic is blended. So, this is the blended yarn. So, where it is assumed that the yarn fibers are actually straight fibers are there is no crimp use although these fibers are not actually straight they are twisted condition, but the there is no crimp micro crimp present. But after the yarn is made the in the loose condition in the hang form these yarns are treated with the steam chamber. So, when at the heat chamber when we treat this yarn that may in that uh, that uh, condition the shrinkable acrylic actually shrinks the total length of the yarn fiber acrylic fiber gets reduced leaving the cotton fiber buckled. So, cotton fiber gets buckled and which forms the air pocket inside that. So, finally, we get the buckle bulk, bulk yarn. So, bulk we are incorporating the bulk air pocket inside the yarn. So, now let us see the what are the effect. So, this is this curve it is a the bulky structure of weft yarn because we have used this for this study what we have used we have used the uh, cotton, um, cotton 100 percent cotton yarn in warp the normal yarn and in weft yarn we have used the this bulk yarn. So, this cotton bulk yarn in weft it works as insulator. So, the x axis this axis it is a this is the contour plot where this x axis gives the yarn count at different count that is 25, 30, 35 and 40 different count is there and this is the acrylic proportion that means shrinkable fiber pro proportion. So, here what we have observed as we increase the acrylic fiber proportion within this limit. So, 20 to uh, say 40 percent that within that limit what we have observed that bulk in the yarn increases. So, as the bulk in the yarn within this limit it, it may not this may this bulk increase this trend may not be applicable if it is say 60 percent or 70 percent at higher level bulk enhancement of bulk may not be that much high, but within this experimental level. So, 20 to 40 percent the bulk increase is there. So, this curve is shows the thermal conductivity and this is the thermal conductivity and uh, this curve is thermal conductivity this is the thermal resistance. So, thermal resistance value is increasing with the increase in acrylic proportion that means, the fabric gives the, uh, the insulating characteristics of the fabric increases with the increase in bulk. So, the same fabric with the just by in incorporating bulk in the yarn we can enhance the insulation. Similarly, if we see the thermal conductivity thermal conductivity value drops just it is just uh, opposite. The other trend we can see that effect of yarn count it is not that significant. Now, if we see the moisture vapor transmission. So, moisture vapor transmission if we see it is a with the increase in acrylic proportion moisture vapor transmission increases which is due to the creation of the pores which enhance the diffusion. So, uh, due to higher and higher diffusion due to the uh, pore structure it gives higher flow of moisture vapor. 
Now, try to see the microporous. So, microporous structure we have created that we have already mentioned. The normal cotton fiber is blended with the PVA fiber which is water soluble. So, after yarn is made then we developed fabric and after fabric is made then when the fabric is washed this creates the void space and this void space are incorporating the insulation. This is steel air is entrapped here and this enhance the insulation of the fabric. Now, if we see this is the air permeability. So, as the PVA content increases the air permeability value it is actually it is as the PVA value uh, it is increasing the air permeability is reducing. So, what does it mean the fab yarn bulk is increasing. So, we are we have kept the total cotton content uh, constant. So, to total cotton content if it is constant total that means, total yarn diameter is more. So, which actually reduces the air permeability due to bulkiness of yarn which means that internal pore that does not affect the air permeability. So, air moves through the interlacement between the yarn. So, if yarn diameter is more keeping the yarn count same. So, we will have the lower air permeability. So, irrespective of the fact that the yarn is pores. So, that shows that air normally does not flow through the pores, it flows through the surface of the yarn that air opening between the yarn. So, although this yarn is bulky, so the yarn uh, the air permeability is reduced, but we will see the, the opposite is the case of the in case of the moisture vapor transmission. So, the same with the increase same trend same with the increase in PVA content the moisture vapor tra transmission will be just reverse the moisture vapor transmission will increase that is basically the phenomena of moisture vapor transmission is due to the diffusion mechanism and here the air transmission is due to the opening through the uh, in between the yarn. So, thermal conductivity if we see as we increase the PVA content the yarn becomes bulky the air pockets are there and thermal conductivity is reduced. So, it is again it gives the insulation characteristics. So, we can use uh, um, either the bulky uh, approach or may be microporous approach or may be any other approach um, by reducing the twist also we can keep may make the yarn bulky. So, effectively uh, the actual the finding is that the if we make the yarn bulky we can get insulation. So, yarn structure plays uh, direct role uh, significant role in deciding the insulation characteristics of clothing. Now, see the moisture vapor transmission rate. So, in with the increase in PVA content we have seen that the air permeability reduces, but if we see here moisture vapor transmission it is increases significantly. So, moist that is due to as we have mentioned it is due to the diffusion characteristics. So, fiber with the yarn with the micropores the due to the gradual transmission of moisture inside the pore as soon as the vapor pressure increases in the pore the uh, the moisture gets transmitted to other side. So, the more smaller pores are there the higher will be the moisture vapor transmission. Our next study is uh, in the similar line here what we have developed here the hollow yarn just to create here again the yarn structure is changed two types of yarns are produced one is the twistless yarn. So, yarn 
does not the fiber it is a uh, this fiber this is a twistless means it is not made of the filament yarn it is a staple yarn it is a twistless cotton yarn we have developed and also hollow cotton yarn and let and it is compared with the normal yarn. So, and three different types of fabrics have been yarns have been developed and from there we developed fabrics. Now, the warp which we have used it is a two ply cotton ring span yarn it is a normal two ply cotton yarn is used. Fabric A we have used a drap yarn, drap yarn with viscous only viscous it is a drap three yarns have been produced where core and sheath both are viscous. Okay. So, it is a 50 50 core sheath and count here it is used 0 0.59 takes sorry 59 takes. So, 59 takes yarn is produced type B yarn it is again drap 3 yarn, but here what we have used the core is viscous okay. and sheath what we have used it is a PVA which is washable PVA viscous it is used PVA viscous combination here, but core is viscous and PVA is uh, at the sheath and again the ratio here it is a 50 50 core sheath ratio and it is count it is a double it is a coarser count it is a in takes 118 takes it is a just double to that of this. Similarly, the fabric or yarn type C where it is a just reversed combination is reversed core is PVA and sheath is viscous 50 50 ratio and again the yarn count it is a coarser double to that of 100 percent viscous it is 118. Now, what is the idea? Idea here is that the PVA is going to be washed away and if we wash and that is a 50 percent the and washing 50 percent PVA it is not commercially viable. One may ask uh, one may question about the validity of the or usability of this study it is not it is just for academic interest we wanted to study the effect of the, uh, the yarn uh, structure on thermal transmission characteristics. So, here core viscous and sheath polyester what does it mean the sheath PVA sheath PVA 50 percent if we wash so finally, the after washing the linear density will be 59 takes. So, same 59 takes we are getting, but the structure here it is PVA as PVA is in the core that means, the fabric B the wave turn will be the twistless it is a there is no twist and the washing is done in fabric state after the interlacement is done. So, the fabric stage if we cannot wash it in yarn stage because if we wash the yarn will be totally twistless and there will not be any strength. On the other hand the fabric C the type C is PVA in the core and in the surface it is a viscous. If we wash 50 percent viscous again the count will be 59 takes and the viscous as it is in the sheath the core will be washed away and the ultimately this yarn will be the hollow yarn. So, we have produced here the twistless yarn and hollow yarn and it is produced in the fabric stage. So, this is uh, the two ply yarn here both it is a fabric A gray fabric A in the waved warp is two ply cotton yarn waved we are using both viscous two although it is showing two different colors, but it is a it is a viscous and viscous. So, when you wash the fabric nothing will happen see so, this structure will remain it is 100 percent viscous then again this as a PVA sample B it is two warp is two ply gray yarn and PVA is at the 
sheath viscous is the, at the core purple color this green color sheath will wash out and the ultimately this core will remain which is twistless and here it is just reverse ok. This will get uh, this this is the PVA purple color this will be washed away and ultimately we will get a hollow yarn. Now, try to see the characteristics. Now, viscous viscous in coarse sheath the yarn count we are getting after washing 59 takes standard yarn count. So, this is the nominal count 59 takes it may actually very little bit fabric ends per inch picks per inch after wash we are getting almost very close value. So, there after wash the fabric mass is almost same and thickness if we see thickness here where it is a hollow yarn is used thickness is little bit high this is due to the presence of hollow yarn. And if we see the air permeability what is happening air permeability in fabric A and fabric B they are on the higher side ok. So, this is the air permeability, but fabric C has got very less air permeability because of the bulky nature. So, ends per inch peaks per inch fabric set is same. So, due to its higher diameter again it is blocking the uh, pores between the opening space between the yarn although this yarn has got higher pore inside the core. So, this C fabric gives lower air permeability and if we see the thermal resistance value thermal resistance in TOG it uh, is measured of the fabric. So, fabric A gives least thermal resistance followed by fabric B and fabric C is giving highest thermal resistance. So, that means the fabric A is due to its compact structure it gives least thermal resistance A highest thermal resistance is given by the hollow yarn. So, due to the opening that is the hollow air entrapment water vapor permeability it is it is interesting that water vapor permeability is highest in case of the hollow yarn. So, that hollow yarn gives least air permeability, but it gives highest water vapor permeability. That means, the this can be used uh, to those condition where it is uh, because it requires a higher air permeability water vapor permeability with least air permeability. if you see the wicking characteristics the liquid transmission characteristics this where the twistless yarn the B gives maximum wicking characteristics particularly in web direction because this is due to the arrangement of fiber the alignment of fiber towards the web direction which creates the clear pore clear capillary and which helps the increase in uh, wicking, wicking characteristics, but the fabric with the uh, with the normal drape yarn random structure which gives least wicking characteristics and water absorbency it is a, a very high water absorbency of for in case of uh, hollow yarn which is due to the fact that it is a it it contains a large pore inside the structure and gives a higher higher water absorption it can hold the more and more water inside the structure. So, the observations are apart from the type of fiber fabric structure and fabric finishes the structure of yarn also plays an important role. So, we can control the thermal comfort by type of fiber by fabric structure by fabric finishes also, but thermal comfort can be controlled to a large extent by controlling the yarn structure 
by incorporating incorporating the bulk in the yarn structure. So, fabric with twistless fibrous assembly shows higher air permeability, lower thermal resistance, lower water vapor permeability, higher wickability, lower, lower water absorbency than the fabric with hollow fibrous assembly. So, depending on the requirement we can select the yarn structure whether should we go for the hollow yarn or should we go for the twistless yarn or normal yarn that depends on the our requirement what type of air permeability we require, what type of uh, thermal resistance we require, what type of moisture vapor permeability we required, wickability we require. So, absorbency. So, this are the our requirement and uh, uh, accordingly we can select our yarn structure. Now, the if next uh, observation is that effect of fiber fine yarn fineness and hairiness on thermal characteristics of fabric. So, if we use the finer yarn, so that will give us the lesser thickness of fabric and lesser thickness will give the less thermal resistance. And also if we increase the yarn twist, so that means if we increase the yarn twist, it will in the entrapped air within the structure will reduce that ultimately will give less thermal resistance and also the fabric thickness will reduce. So, less higher twist always give less thermal resistance that is due to the different factors one is it and it removes the entrapped air. So, entrapped air content is reduced. So, the conductive conductive thermal transmission is reduced and also with the increase in twist the diameter of yarn reduces that means for same set fabric set same ends per inch peaks per inch for same uh, mass per unit area the openness in the uh, that is cover factor of the fabric will uh, reduce. So, that will enhance the radiative and convective heat loss. So, both all con convective radiative and conductive heat is lost due to increase in twist. So, increase in twist has got uh, the major impact on thermal transmission characteristics. So, another parameter another factor which affect the thermal uh, resistance of fabric it is a hairiness. If we can increase the hairiness of uh, uh, yarn or yarn uh, fabric surface hairiness we can enhance the entrapment of air steel air in the surface of the fabric. So, that is how that if we, we normally try to increase the thermal insulation by brushing at the surface. So, that it prevents the heat flow that entrapped air at the surface prevents the free heat flow and which results higher thermal resistance. Now, uh, another factor it is a the effect of microclimate thickness. So, what is that? The microclimate as we know that it is a between our body our skin and the cloth. So, depending on the microclimate thickness our insulation uh, the thermal insulation uh, changes of clothing changes. So, my, what is microclimate? It is a basically steel air entrapped air. Okay. The increase in microclimate thickness in increases the thickness of air layer between the uh, skin and fabric. So, total total heat flux of human body decreases. So, from the our skin to the environment that total heat flux will reduce due to the entrapped air, but this effect of thickness is less than the effect of microclimate. So, we can increase the fabric thickness to, to reduce the heat flow or we can increase the microclimate thickness 
to reduce the heat flow. So, if we compare this to the effect is more in case of microclimate thickness. So, we have we, we if we have two options if we can increase the microclimate thickness, if we can increase the entrapped air between skin or fabric or within two layers between two layers of fabric that option we should take other than that uh, increasing the fabric thickness. We should not make the fabric thicker unnecessarily if we can incorporate if we can develop a structure with higher microclimate thickness. So, that effect of microclimate thickness is more prominent than effect of fabric thickness. So, because the fabric consists of fiber, fiber has got some thermal conductivity and the thermal conductivity of fiber is more than air. So, if we can incorporate pure air inside the structure that will be that will be preferable and fabric thickness the effect of fabric thickness is larger when microclimate thickness is less. So, if there is no microclimate or very thin microclimate then we can have the clear effect of fabric thickness, but if the microclimate thickness is large then changing the fabric thickness will not affect the thermal insulation characteristics of clothing. So, here we are talking about the clothing ensemble where we can incorporate the microclimate between the skin and clothing or between different clothing layer. So, we will see in our one of the studies next we will see the how incorporation of air layer between two fabrics layer in affect the thermal transmission characteristics, thermal insulation characteristics. So, that thermal transmission through different air gap with different convective mode. So, that study here it have uh, three layers of fabrics have been taken outer layer, middle layer and inner layer. Between these three layers we have actually that we have incorporated the air layer and thickness of air layers have been changed to just to see the effect of the microclimate thickness keeping the fabric layers same. So, this is the arrangement what has been done it is a outer layer fabric, middle layer fabric and inner layer between this layers outer layer and inner layer middle layer we have incorporated air gaps and between middle and inner layer another air gap two sets of air gaps are there. So, the experimental design was such that that between inner layer and middle layer inner and middle layer the air gap distance have been changed from 0 millimeter that is there is no air gap to maximum 7 millimeter. So, this is the, the uh, these are the combination. So, air gap the, the fabric combination 1 means there is no air gap between inner to middle and middle to this is the air gap 2 air gap 1. Okay. So, and next fabric 2 sample when the inner and middle layer there is no air gap but middle and top layer there is air gap of 2. So, in this way it is changed. So, if we see the this fabric final this this fabric is that first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth fabric if you see the total thickness of the assembly will be 14 millimeter 14 millimeter plus the thickness of inner layer thickness of middle layer and thickness of outer layer. So, this is the experimental design has been made so with to have different types of uh, fabric uh, layers with different air gaps. Now, this fabric layers are of different type like a fabric assembly 
So, this fabric assembly we have developed 5 fabric assemblies A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. The assembly 1 where its inner layer is oven fabric. So, for all the inner layer we have used the same oven fabric. So, same oven fabric is used for all the fabric layers. Layer 2 middle layer we have used actually we have used two different types of fabrics. One is uh, non oven wedding, non oven fabric and another is the warp <coughs> knitted spacer fabric. So, the idea of middle layer is to provide the insulation. So, it was thought that okay, that non oven fabric is uh, is used to give the it is it has it is porous in structure. So, that is why non oven fabric is used it get it entrap large amount of air also and warp knitted fab spacer fabric which also entrap large quantity of air. So, this, uh, this with this combination it is thought, but ulti finally we what we found that non oven fabric gives better insulation than warp knitted fabric uh, spacer fabric, because uh, the orientation of the the spacer yarns spacer, which are vertical. So, spacer uh, yarns orientation which helps in flow transmission of heat, so that it gives low, lower thermal insulation. And outer layer we have got two types of outer layer one is a normal oven fabric. So, for fabric A 1, A 2, A 3 we have used normal oven fabric and A 4 and A 5 this fab, this gives the coated fabric. So, coated fabrics with different known pore size it is a basically it uh, it is a uh, with very uh, less pore size which only allows the moisture vapor to transmit it is water impermeable moisture vapor permeable fabric. So, this five combinations have been made then we have measured the thermal and moisture vapor transmission. So, this is actually measured in sweating guarded hot plate. So, guarded hot plate where this is a test plate bottom plate fabric specimen is there and its top plate is placed. Now, here the fabrics it is a from different types of fabrics are there. So, what we have done the total thickness of fabric. So, total thickness is changed. So, this is the minimum thickness and this is the maximum thickness, but the combination is the the same fabric combinations are there. Okay. These are the same for assembly 1. What is the assembly 1? This is the assembly 1. Assembly A 1 it is a oven fabric, then non oven wedding and oven fabric. So, which is assembly 1 and the thickness is changed thickness of total assembly is changed from 1 uh, 0 to 7. So, fabric that is the air gap is changed. So, this is the total thickness it is goes up to say 20 or uh, like that 20 around say uh, 17 18 uh, millimeter thickness and thermal resistance is given. So, what we have observed with the increase in thickness of the air gap thermal resistance for all conditions air con a condition of mode of transmission it is a increasing. So, what are the modes? Here there are three different modes have been used one is non convective mode, next is that a blue one is non convective mode, to red one is that a natural convection and third one this is it is a forced convection. Now, what is non convective mode? Non convective mode is where we place top plate. So, we do not allow any convection. So, without any convection what how much heat is transmitted. So, that is how that that is the non convective mode and when we want to measure the convective natural convective mode then top plate is removed. So, the actually the heat is allowed to flow it in convective mode also this is the natural convection with the natural convection also and forced convection that system is that where we have to remove the top plate and allow the air to flow at certain speed. So, that it actually simulates the 
the tot, uh, wind shield condition when air is blowing. So, air is then and in y axis it shows the that thermal resistance current. So, thermal resistance at different convective mode is actually it is showing. So, what does it show this picture? This graph this is for assembly 1 and this one is for assembly 2. Assembly 1 and assembly 2 are almost same only that and here the top layer you have to see what is the top layer? Top layer here we have used it is a it is a oven fabric you can see here it is a oven fabric. Both assembly 1 and assembly 2 their combinations are same only the non oven wedding this fabric their thickness their mass per their uh, mass per unit area is changed. So, here if we see the non convective mode the thermal resistance is highest. So, there is no convection that is why it is a it gives the highest thermal resistance and if we see the natural convection through natural convection little bit heat is x transmitted extra heat is transmitted that is the, the although the difference is less, but still the this difference shows the the how much air how much heat is transmitted through actually convective mode. So, natural convection. So, the difference is showing the amount of heat transmitted in natural by natural convection. Now, when air is started blowing what is happening the total actually total total phenomena has changed total principle has changed here it takes away the air from that portion and total forced convection is started. So, when forced convection started that means, air started blowing the thermal resistance of the total system drops drastically it is a significant drop sometime it becomes half thermal resistance. The total system is actually the thermal resistance of the total system total clothing system is dropped to almost half most of the cases huge drop in thermal resistance. So, that means, the thermal forced convection for assembly 1 and assembly 2 are significant. So, that is how it is showing that uh, the with the increase in air entrapment the thermal resistance is increasing and the it shows the non convective thermal resistance is highest followed by the natural convective thermal resistance and in forced convective mode the thermal resistance is lowest. Now, if we see the fabric assembly 5 what is fabric assembly 5? Fabric assembly 5 shows that it is a the top layer is changed with the the coated fabric. So, this is the coated fabric. So, in coated fabric the pores are almost blocked. So, whatever air is moving that does not affect the the heat transmission convective heat transmission characteristics it is almost it is close to non convective mode or natural convection. So, there is no difference it is a the fabric when if we are using a breathable layer breathable layer outside. So, that in that case the thermal resistance it, it can retain the thermal resistance. So, that is how the in case of wind chilled condition. So, when we cold air is blowing so in those application which we must use a clothing outer layer with a coated outer layer. So, here the outer coated layer it is use it is not only for the waterproofing and other it also prevents the heat loss due to the, the forced convection. So, that is uh, this curve shows here. So, higher thermal resistance at non convective mode less thermal resistance at forced convection. Breathable and metallic coated fabric improves the thermal insulation property at forced convection. So, we must use some breathable and layer to 
prevent uh, any heat loss. So, higher thermal resistance for non-oven fabric is that is uh, more than it is a spacer fabric. So, thermal resistance in non-oven fabric it is more than the spacer fabric. If you see the quantity of thermal resistance at any level. So, it is a it is a lower the this is the fabric with the with spacer fabric. So, sp assembly 3 if we see it is a with the warp knitted spacer fabric and if we see the value here this is the spacer fabric here typically it is a 0 0.1 less than 0 0.1 at typically 0 0.2 here 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. Okay. So, that overall it has been observed that the spacer fabric instead of you know, what we thought that it will give provide the insulation it is not able to in, uh, provide insulation the reason behind is that it is a it is a due to the arrangement of spacer yarn. So, for extreme cold climate clothing to make our uh, body warm so to in enhance the thermal resistance it is not recommended that spacer fabric is not re recommended. So, in place of spacer fabric one can use the non oven wadding. So, this also it is a assembly one which is thermal resistance of non oven fabric we can see the effectively it is a total value is more than the spacer fabric. So, here we have uh, discussed the uh, thermal transmission uh, characteristics through different air gap and different convective mode. So, in the uh, next um, uh, segment we will study different uh, process parameters which affect the thermal properties of clothing. So, here we have developed uh, different uh, fabrics non oven fabrics and different combinations of non oven fabrics and effect of uh, our uh, needle punch density, effect of mass per unit area, effect of uh, depth of penetration on thermal transmission and moisture vapor transmission of clothing which actually affect the thermal comfort characteristics. So, this uh, thing will um, affect we will discuss in our uh, next segment till then thank you.